Heroes in blue, proud and true, volunteers with hearts that pursue, standing strong all day long. Auxiliary, here's your song. In Toronto streets, they walk the beat in uniforms, neat and discreet. From parades to the community stay, their cafe to their face. Heroes in blue, proud and true, volunteers with hearts that pursue. Standing strong all day long Auxiliary, here's your song We train to serve, never to swerve With the courage none can curve Crime prevention, their intention In every event so we're, we're talking about auxiliary today. We're talking about a lot of things, but we're talking about auxiliary today. I meant to leave you with music in the background with that, 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 that screen up, and then I didn't flip the switch. And I was like, I, I'm going to have the switch flipped. It's going to work. And, and I, yeah, oops. Anyway, good morning. Happy Wednesday. My name is Sean Shapiro. This is that show called Ask a Traffic Cop. It may be beneficial if I actually put the logo on the screen. Uh, it helps with identifying, you know, what's up. Uh, on in studio on screen, my friend Jared. He's an auxiliary officer with the Toronto Police Service, fifty two division. That's right, John. And uh, yeah, we're we're uh, we're going to talk about everything we always talk about, which is what you want to talk about. But we're also going to talk about the auxiliary program, one that I used to be a part of, and I'm very proud of my time with the auxiliary program. So I'm looking forward to to chatting about all the stuff you do now and the stuff that I used to do. And if you have questions about auxiliary. It's a volunteer program. Police services across the planet do it. Uh, it's definitely something we do here in Ontario, the OPP, York Regional Police, all of the police services here. Right. I think it's actually mandatory that auxiliary services exist. I, they, you know, I, you may not know this, you may know this, that the auxiliary program predates the Toronto Police Service. It does, and it was actually a function of Hurricane Hazel. It was created coming out of that uh, that hurricane in the 60s. He really does know his stuff. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk all about that. I think it's awesome. And uh, yeah. And, and Brendan says auxiliary is definitely an underappreciated group. It is. Thank you. Uh, and uh, not so much. It, it, it's a cool topic. Very close to my heart. Uh, if you're watching, it's probably going to be on one of the... Uh, the, the uh, Platforms right up here above my head. We're on uh, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Kick, X, also known as Twitter, fondly referred to as Twitter. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I got a message because I put up a screen but didn't put audio is we're going to be limited for 10 minutes on TikTok. But uh, get your comments in when you are watching and we'll we'll, we'll get to your questions in just a second. I uh, also want to remind everybody that I am downloading this episode, as with all other episodes, and then putting it up on podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio uh, Podcasts, and uh, Spotify. It's available as, as, as video and Spotify too. But the goal here is to make it legal for you to listen to while you're driving because you can't legally watch us while you're driving. I will say this. If you're on TikTok and you want to listen to us, you can burn your data and turn off the screen. TikTok will continue the audio feed, which is cool. You know, it used to be that if you turned it off, it would just go away. So you can interact or listen to the live show, but... I'm someone who wants to not waste data. So if you're not going to be, if you're if you're driving and your focus is driving, maybe don't waste your data. Maybe synchronize and, and listen to the show later. Anyway, uh, welcome. We've been talking about this for a while. You know, it's it's great to be here, Sean, and, and I appreciate the invitation. I, I love talking about the auxiliary program. I love what the, the the things that you do and and that you bring to the the public. So again, it's it's actually an, an absolute pleasure to be here. And for those that were asking uh, about the microphone I tested a while back, this is your microphone. It is. I have a collection. I'm an I'm an old radio guy, and and uh, you you and I have talked quite a bit about that. And and I tell you, this is the winner. You 100% think it's the winner. Absolutely, this is the winner. I, I So my wife doesn't want it to be the winner. I, I because for anyone who doesn't know, these are not cheap. Uh, microphones, I mean, we have, uh, the service owns a bunch of these. These are the MV7s, and they're quite nice. They're a USB and uh, XLR microphone. Uh, great for podcasting, great for, for multi-use. It also has support of USB as well as uh, XLR. So you can use it on your phone directly. You can use it on your computer without any, having additional equipment. But it doesn't sound like the seven SM seven B, and it certainly doesn't sound like your microphone. Uh, and and uh, but it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's versatile. Uh, the, these microphones are like five hundred dollars each. And just before the trolls start going, neither of these microphones belong to the police service. I paid for this one. You paid for that one. I did. Yeah. Yes. And now my my wife is scared that I might want to buy one of those. Just saying. 
Uh, so, so because we have, because I, I oopsie dude and played the, um, the whole photo without audio for four minutes, uh, we may have a, a shortage of people popping in by way of the live stream on TikTok, but that means we have more time to spend with the folks who are watching elsewhere. A uh, few things to ask before we get started. One, if you don't already follow us, please do. This is the Toronto Police Traffic Services channel. And we talk about traffic safety, traffic law, and police stuff every single day. That I turn the live stream on because obviously yesterday I wasn't here. I was I was doing something Secret Squirrel special. Uh, we, we might have gotten the delivery of some new machines here that are very, very cool that I haven't posted photos of that we haven't made public yet. But I'm hinting hardcore. And did I mention motorcycles are a topic I wanted to discuss today because it's spring and motorcycles have wheels. Uh, just saying, uh, it might be some motorcycle-related content coming out as a result of my not being on stream yesterday. And uh, what else can I do? And so we're going to talk about auxiliary. We're going to talk about auxiliary. Uh, we're going to talk about auxiliary. And we're going to talk about motorcycles and, of course, traffic and safety and all that stuff. Uh, greeting and salutations. We have messages from Michaela Draconis, first one in the chat. And he was here right at the start because he's the first one here. Uh, he's coming back with some dad jokes. Do you know any good dad jokes? You're a dad joke guy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I, I did, but my kids are older now. So you, um, you've lost so them. We've moved from dad jokes to inappropriate jokes. Uh huh. You've graduated to the next level. So yeah, we don't share no, those here. No, no. M mind you, um, sometimes Akela gives me a quote or a dad joke that I don't read beforehand because I have all the trust in him, and I start reading. I'm like, I should not be reading. No, he's actually pretty good. Uh, if you do have dad jokes, throw them in the into the uh, chat. Uh, and one of the things I completely squirreled and didn't say. If you don't already follow us, follow us and, and and share us. Please, if you're on TikTok, please tap the screen. Let people know that this is content worth watching. It is content for you to make the road safer, to save lives. And, and it's funny, so often we get criticized for, as the police, being the big meanies who tell people what to do and don't push, uh, you know, what, what's really important. Like, we should go out and only get criminals and only uh, prevent cars from being stolen, but completely ignoring the concept that traffic safety is important. Have you ever been in a crash? Uh, fortunately, I, I have not. But uh, as an auxiliary, we've certainly come upon crashes in, in various uh, forms in, in the city. And it's a frightening thing. And uh, it, it's frightening for the, those that are involved. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's often frightening even for the first responders that come upon these, these collisions. So it's, it's, it's absolutely critical. It starts there. You know, and, and people who are watching may not realize, you know, it says auxiliary on the, in your chest, and I've talked about auxiliary, 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 but what is the auxiliary? So the auxiliary program, Sean, I liken it to the reserves. We're a volunteer force. We work hand-in-hand, side-by-side with the, uh, the Toronto Police Service, and our primary focus is community. It's community outreach, crime prevention, uh, engagement. We roll up into what we call the Community Partner and Engagement Unit under Inspector Rinkoff, and we have a uh, we have about 300 auxiliary uh, officers now. We're actually rebuilding post uh, post COVID, so we're at community events. We're doing crime prevention details. There's the proactive piece. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was at the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which was a fantastic event. Always is. Um, but from a reactive perspective, last week uh, you may have seen on the news there was a missing elderly. Uh, a vulnerable elderly gentleman that that went missing. So we were mobilized to help uh, search for that gentleman. And fortunately, an eagle-eyed crossing guard in Leslieville no uh, spotted him. Absolutely. I love so it. there's the proactive piece, but there's also the reactive piece where we're mobilized to assist in uh, in Toronto police operations. It, it, it is. It, I often say that it is the it is simply the best way to volunteer. I mean, you can volunteer doing all sorts of things. You can walk dogs at the uh, SPCA. You can go and 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 help in in different places. And, and do important work, but none have the flexibility and unique perspective offered by a, by being an auxiliary. Where you're, you know, you're, you're put in a uniform, you get some training, you're out and about, you're interacting with people. It's it's similar to what I like about policing in that every day is different. You're not doing like I volunteered at a suicide hotline, and I uh, I, I was there to help people, and I was I did the overnight shift, and the phone would ring, and but yes, it was important. Yes, but it it was just it was in a little room. And I like being outside and meeting new people. So the auxiliary was the best thing for me. And, of course, it ended up leading to uh, confirming that I really loved doing it and got paid for it afterwards and became a court officer, did that while being auxiliary for 12 years, and then switched over into police constable role. So uh, and, and many people think it's a stepping stone. Do you, do you have to become a cop if you're an auxiliary? Is this something you plan on doing and switching uh, your uniforms? Absolutely not. However, a number of us do end up getting on the job. I'm a little old for that now, I think, uh, Sean. We've had that discussion. Um, so, so for me, no. 
but certainly for a number of my classmates, uh, they're putting in the time as an auxiliary, getting a feel for what community engagement and policing looks like, and many of them will go on to uh, become full-fledged members of the Toronto Police Service. It's a, it is a great stepping stone for that, but it doesn't have to be. I know people that did full, full life, uh, their entire lives. They worked, yes. a, a friend of mine who was also a staff sergeant with the auxiliary, I, I mean, he did 40 years, I think, it, while being a, a bell, per, uh, bell service guy, did everything, just loved the auxiliary. It was his hobby, it was his passion, his friends were there. Uh, it was a great way t- for him to do what he did, like, like to enjoy life. And I, I think that volunteerism doesn't have to be a thing you do, it can be part of who you are. It is. It's it's a like you said. Every day is different. We get to interact with the public. Uh, we get to be part of some incredible world class events. Every day is different. Uh, we're often out on bikes. A number of us are bike trained. Nice. Uh, a number of us are search and rescue trained. So there's tremendous opportunity to f- really feel like we're contributing. I was a motorcycle officer as an auxiliary officer right. at traffic services. There's marine unit that's officers correct. with auxiliary. I believe there's some mounted unit officers with auxiliary. Uh, whether that's still happening or was happening in the past, I, there's opportunities. And you know, people say, well, what do you waste all this time for? You're giving too much. You could be working, making more money. Okay, I enjoyed it, first of all. So there's a personal, personal joy part attached. But... I actually became an auxiliary sergeant before I got promoted as an ex- as a, a court officer supervisor. And the experiences I got as an auxiliary helped me be a better court officer, helped me get ready for supervisory uh, role and promotion because I, I, you know, you only get exposure to certain skills. You only get to hone certain skills based on the life you're living. Well, when you're exposed to all this new stuff, you're going to be thrown into situations that challenge you and help you grow. So something really cool. Um, if you are interested, and, and we're going to do this a little out of order, uh, if you are interested in becoming a, a member of the Auxiliary, now they're not, there's no posting right now, uh, but there is a wonderful website, and it's the same website you go to if you're interested in becoming a police officer, in that you go to www.tps.ca. Forward slash careers. I don't know why that took so long to say, uh, but uh, there you go. Uh, the employment unit. That's the that's the web page. That's what we're looking at right now. If you go here, uh, you can get information about all sorts of stuff. Of course, police constable, special constable, but right over here, auxiliary officer. And uh, what what you know, we used to be called the checkerheads. Uh, you're not wearing any checkers now because you're wearing a baseball cap. The new uh, the new auxiliary hat uh, is the same as everybody every other police officer's. But it used to be, and the forge cap, the formal hat, has that checkerboard. The other distinguishing mark, of course, you have auxiliary across your chest, and you have the rocker underneath the uh, the patch on your your shoulder that says auxiliary. So the idea is not to to look like a police officer. It's to it's to show exactly what you are, which is a volunteer and and a, a, a person someone can go to for help but it, but there's there's no blending like the, it's it's the, we need to be distinguishable yes and, and we're also wearing the blue shirts light right? blue shirts so, yes so the light blue shirts is a is a is a primary uh, uh, indicator if you will uh, that we are auxiliary uh, officers and I had the wrong graphic up as a background but uh, <laughs> it showed Aaron Urquhart there for a second uh, the uh, the deal is that it, yeah, it's not. It's not about uh, you know posing as you're not pretending to be. It's it's very much an appreciated and different role. Um, when when I started, I, th- I think we were still blue shirts for regular officers too. So everybody wore right. uh, blue shirts. So that wasn't one of the distinguishing marks, uh, which is which is interesting. Um, and then it gradually ch- when the police officers went to uh, uh, going to uh, what am I trying to spit out here to dark shirts to blue shirts to these shirts. Then we really, and it was good because the last thing you want is someone to run up to you thinking you're armed with a firearm because you're not carrying a firearm. Correct, correct. We do have use of force training mm-hmm. and we do have use of force tools, but a firearm is not, is not one of them. And, and that's, and that's there, there, are, there are police services, like I, I know York Region and OPP, train their officers on firearms and, uh, and, and shotguns. And very often when they're out in, the, in, the, in a rural community, um, they're trained and, and are totally in a position to utilize those firearms. Um, it, it, here, it's it's less likely that that's going to be the case. Correct. We're we're trained on some firearm handling. Mm-hmm. So if we are put in an unfortunate situation where there is a firearm involved, uh, we have some confidence in handling that firearm. Uh, but that's that's about the extent of it. Uh, we rely on our our brethren uh, in in the police service to uh, help us along if we do get into a, a, a situation that requires some additional use of force. But that's very rare, Sean. It's it's more that that I you know people are sometimes apprehensive about becoming auxiliaries because they're worried about being mistaken, being expected to do something that a police officer. And and there is some confu- confusion. Many people don't realize what auxiliary is. Um, 
but so it, it's very good. It's just a good thing. And I, for the longest time, the auxiliary police were like, oh, I want bl black shirts. I want dark shirts. Okay. But there's issue, there, there's potential issues with that. So I, I, I'm just glad that, that, uh, that we all get out and we all do good things. And it, the color of our shirts don't matter, in my opinion. Right. Uh, okay. Paula says, good morning, Sean. Welcome back. Yes, thank you, because it was a couple days away. Uh, we got uh, Northern Pike who says, good morning, Sean, and everyone with some thumbs up. Uh, Paul says, I had two watches on and still late. I wasn't late. I just didn't flip a switch. I intentionally had music playing in the office that I thought you could hear that you couldn't hear. And I should have clued into the fact. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is the comment we, we read earlier from Brendan, uh, who says, auxiliary is definitely an uh, underappreciated group. Uh, Basharat Ali says uh, a lot. He's got a long message here. Uh, Basharat, as a police officer in Punjab, Pakistan, and, and in the traffic uh, realm, and uh, he's asking me about cricket. Wow, there's, there's a, I have to read that after because I'm sure he's not. He's asking me and not the, the gang. Uh, let's see here. Do you take notes on pen and paper or with an app? We, we, we're still old school. We actually have a uh, police memo book where we do. We, I know there's some connected phones and some technology that's coming but all, out. But all of us do. In terms of police officers, auxiliary, uh, my memo book is some, here it is. Yep. My, my memo book, I still take my notes here and uh, we track our day. We record things. It's required as per uh, policies and procedures that, that all police officers do that, auxiliary officers as well. Uh, and it's great. You know, it's actually, again, a skill that you develop. Most people don't, aren't in the habit of, of noting everything they do. You know, you're, you're asked to go here, there, or anywhere. Who told you? When did you leave? When did you get there? All those things are tracked, and it helps you account for your day. When someone says, where were you? Very few people can actually express themselves with it with certainty. So it's, it's a skill. It really is, and, and memorializing the details is, is absolutely critical because you do need to account for that time, mm -hmm. and, and having a, a, a good, disciplined uh, memo book approach is always going to serve you well. 100%. Uh, Something I didn't mention or didn't talk about at the beginning, but need to talk about. It's the only advertising I do on this show. Uh, and it is, uh, actually, that's not true. I technically, uh, I, I talk about a whole bunch of things that could be construed as advertising, but this is the real one. Uh, Vision Zero enforcement team. Have you heard of them? Uh, absolutely. I see every morning on, on X, I get my uh, Vision Zero update. Yes, absolutely. there you go. So what they are as a, a group of officers who are assigned to solely involve themselves in the enforcement activities of the city. All they do is change driver behavior one ticket at a time. Uh, they're focused on the big four, those are those serious uh, in injury, injury and life-threatening caused, that's not worded right. They are the behaviors that lead to serious injury and death most often on our roads, speeding, aggressive driving, distracted driving, impaired driving. And every day that they're out there, uh, they focus on a different area. That is not to say that they uh, they only spend time in those areas. Obviously, they're driving to and from those areas. And any officer in the police service, any officer anywhere in Ontario can issue you a ticket. But these officers are focusing on changing driver behavior. So where are they today? They are spending time in 14 Division and 55 Division. Those are the neighborhoods of Christie, Ossington, Annex, Little Italy, the beaches, Riverdale, Danforth, East York, you know, places where real people live, work, and play. And uh, we, we announce every day where they are because we want the communities that they're spending time in to know that we're out there and we care. And it's important to share that information. A lot of people are like, why would you tell the people where you are? They're just going to slow down. I'm like, let them slow down. That's good. I, I live at Christie's, Sean, and I can attest to the fact that uh, they're out doing their thing. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, Alex would like to know if a police scanner is allowed. And uh, the, uh, the answer is that you can't get one for Toronto because they are actually encrypted channels. But uh, there's nothing wrong with, with listening. You can't transmit on a police band. The OPP and some rural police services uh, do have scanners or, or do broadcast on open channels so you could listen. And fire and ambulance are open. Interesting. I, I used to have a scanner and I used to listen to it to and from work. And do you have the app? No, I, I don't, but I do recall the, the Radio Shack days. You'd go in and get a realistic scanner and yes. figure out which frequencies uh, you know Toronto Police or York Region Police were on, and you could certainly... Uh, Listen that way, but yes, the, the technology and the encryption has made that rather impossible. So I've been going through um, my my dad's garage, and in doing so, I have found a treasure trove of realistic crap. Right. And I say realistic, <laughs> it's a brand name. It was the stuff from Radio Shack. Yep. And it, I mean, it's such a flashback. I mean, the big antenna that okay. I extended, and, you know, there's five feet of CB, but I, I kept it. It's now sitting in my little home po uh, podcasting studio on the shelf. And, uh, I mean, those are crystals. Like not, we're not talking about digital dial. You had to buy a crystal yes. for the channel you wanted to transmit on. Yes. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty fascinating. Things have come a long, <laughs> long, long, long way. 
and I'm glad for it. But I'm also nostalgic and like the old garbage. I, I have my Apple IIe sitting on a desk behind me. I have a uh, a Color Mac Plus. I think it's a Mac Plus or Classic Mac, Mac Color Classic. Anyway, it's the all-in-one computer. Like I have a bunch of old computers, and I think I think they're nice. And I was going to donate all of them to a TikToker who makes content. But I'm going to keep a couple of my favorites and then give them the rest. So I, I had uh, I recently donated a Commodore PET. Did you really? Absolutely. To a the, pet to, to the high school that uh, that uh, I grew up uh, grew up in uh, through uh, uh, in Vaughan, and our, our old friend, of course, uh, Chris Andrews, ran the radio station there. Yeah. Maybe rest in peace, a, a good guy. So I actually donated my Commodore PET to that uh, that computer uh, department. I've, I've got recently. a Vic Twenty. That's the closest That's thing. Cool I, I, I bought it for two dollars at a garage sale, like. 10 or 15 years ago. That's pretty cool. I've, I don't think I've ever turned it on, but I've got all the accessories. You know what? Old technology does one thing very, very well, is it makes you appreciate new technology. Absolutely. You know, when I had my, my I think my Apple IIe runs at about six and a half megahertz. And, and people are like, huh? <laughs> like my mouse has a faster processor than that. It, you, you, it, when you got into a machine that was like seven megahertz, you started to go, oh, I can't go back to the six megahertz. And now I don't even know how fast things are. They're just lightning. You can't keep up with yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, I mean just, just the power in, in, in this thing compared to those days. It's more it's, than it's a supercomputer of the day. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, let's see what's going on. Dan says, oh, Dan says, I work for a company that makes an app for police to take notes, write tickets, and main client is York Regional Police. Very cool. I'd like to know more about that. In fact, we may have already spoken uh, about that because I was at an event and someone was talking about that. I was at a, uh, a drug recognition expert uh, event last year. And uh, were we talking? Was it you? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. We've got uh, Blake McQuinn. McQuinn? Did I say that right? Uh, is a motorcycle tail tidy legal if it maintains signal lights and you keep your plate visible? Have you ever heard of a tail tidy? No, I'm not sure what I, that I, is. I'm gonna I'm gonna speculate that that is something that allows you to take your um, your signals and combine them into a single light, and and then that you then possibly tuck or get rid of the fender and everything sort of gets smaller and tidier. I'm gonna guess uh, there are some issues when you take your signals that are clear and discernible and then make them all as one that at a distance you can't tell whether or not it's a signal or not. Um, it, it could become a safety issue. It, I. I I would say that is a safety issue. Uh, you, you're already like headlights of motorcycles are already confused as cars off in the distance. A lot of a lot of collisions we find that when when vehicles are moving quickly and it's a single headlight, it's assumed by the driver that it is two headlights at a distance, thus a single light source, and they ignore it because they think it's far away. So a lot of listen. This is the, one of the topics of today is really to talk about motorcycling and they're back on the road. They've been on the road. Some of them never left. There are people who have ridden nearly all year and we've had a pretty, pretty light winter. So if you're out there and about and you're driving, walking, running, you expect to see more motorcycles and, and keep an eye out for them. You know, they're, they're, they're just not, people don't. And especially because our, our cycle of weather, we, we, we don't see them all year round as often and we forget they exist. And cars drive right into them. And this is this is not to say that that other vulnerable road users are less important because pedestrians and cyclists have this problem all year round. But motorcycles just add to the mix, and we take special care to, to mention it, not just because I'm a motorcyclist who got hit by a car and it's, it's near and dear, but because uh, we see tragedy in all areas. We lost too many pedestrians last year. We lost too many. Uh, we, we lose and continue to use to lose too many people as a result of collisions, which is the whole reason I do what I do. No, that's that's great. Uh, certainly, when we're on the road, and and you hear the motorcycle, you, and, and you need that spatial awareness to to know exactly where they are, so you can you know drive accordingly because you know they're going to come up and and either pass you or or remain behind you. But it's absolutely critical that that you're at least aware they're there. Well, you should be aware of everybody. Sure. Ideally, and this is a problem people have is they are addicted to their devices. Um, you know, when when you were younger, not that it was that long ago. He says he's old, but, you know. Uh, did you think drivers were better or worse than drivers today? That's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, back, back then, we were more aware. I still look over my shoulder when I'm backing up, although I still have a camera. Yeah. I'm using the camera because it's, it actually provides some incredible insight For in sure. terms of what's behind you. But I'm still of the mind where you still have to, you still have to eyeball where you're going. I think that aside from the fact that, that we have more technology and 
creature comforts. We generally, the biggest problem uh, plaguing new drivers or drivers today, regardless of their age, are the number of distractions, the number of technological improvements that are now distractors even built into the car. And infotainment, I have to go through two menus to like change my temperature. Right. If I'm in Apple CarPlay listening to music or watching my GPS, well, not actually watching, but having it on screen, I have to bounce out to know what temperature it is. My dial doesn't have a, a, a number gate. So there are things that distract me from driving just because of the technology that's been, like the, the old school dial or, or you know, hot cold was easy, it worked. Yes. Not to mention the fact that our lifestyles are simply busier, a quieter time. We weren't worried about social media. We weren't worried about gonzo meetings all over the time. It, it's like, it was just a simpler life. And maybe I'm oversimplifying, but that's where I, where I feel it. So I'm like, uh, I think that back in the day it was a little bit safer. It was, I, though I do appreciate the blind spot lights. Yeah. I think those are, bliss is those awesome. are terrific. Bliss is bliss. A bliss is bliss. Uh, we got Aiden who says, good morning, everyone. We're definitely taking a slower, a slower cruise through today's show, uh, just because, but we, I, I see that people have been pumping into the uh, thing and I see that my wife is watching. Good morning, honey. Uh, it is always good to have, uh, you know, family in the chat, Absolutely. especially when it's, when it's my wife. Uh, we have my Brazilian fan watching. <laughs> good to see you. And, uh, Evandro is joining the auxiliary program. He's actually joined the auxiliary program at Peel Regional Police. Uh, we, we couldn't get him to Toronto. They, they took him first and they win. Uh, but Evandro's been watching. He's actually uh, been taking our content, created here, and he's been uh, translating it into Portuguese and Spanish and putting it on his TikTok channel to help the community. And that's really important. And you're going to do great things with the auxiliary. I feel it. Uh, and his graduation is this week and oh, I'm going. Congratulations, uh, I, yeah. Evandro. That's, that's great. That's Take that moment, you know, it's it's an amazing feeling when you walk into that gymnasium in your ones and your dress uniform and, and you're handed the uh, the diploma and, and the paperwork. Just, it, it truly is a life-changing event. Just take it all in and, and and record it and love it. Yeah, I, get, I had friends that came by. Like, like, the, auxiliary was the, 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 the first introduction to truly uh, getting to my dream. Since I was 10 years old or 8 years old, wanting to be a cop, that was the, 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 the peak where, you know, I don't think you, I could have smiled bigger right. or, or it hurt, you know, cause, but it was, a, it was an amazing start to it. What's been a 24 year career now, uh, with the police service and a hundred percent best thing in the world. Evandro, uh, I'm excited to, to be there as he gets his, uh, his badge, uh, you know, presentation and his, and gets his, his big March past, I'm assuming, uh, at Peel Regional Police Headquarters. I think it's at the headquarters. In any case, I'll be there. Enjoy it. And uh, let's see here. So he says, April 14th to 20th, 2024, let's recognize and celebrate every volunteer and each contribution they're making to strengthen uh, inclusivity and well-being in our communities. I think that's a great message. And yes, it is a, uh, a celebratory time and recognizing volunteers. I've been seeing Twitter's being littered with all sorts of thanks to volunteers and auxiliaries. So thank you. You're welcome. We're actually doing a TPS volunteer event at the college uh, in the next few days as well. Is that right? Yeah. What, so what does that mean? What is, what's going to happen? Uh, there'll be uh, some food, some celebrations, recognizing folks in the community that have stepped up. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Very nice. Yeah. When, when is that? Uh, I'll have to check my calendar. Okay, let me know. Is, is it days. like an open thing? Or is it an invite only? Or what is it? Uh, we, we know some people. We know some people? On the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I got a joke from uh, Northern Pike. Okay, we got Boy Mom uh, who says, good morning. I saw earlier uh, Zombie said, good morning. I put you on screen and kept moving. Didn't Just trying to make sure we, we click on things. We've got a, a hello. Uh, more words, a hello. It was an exclamation mark. I'm not using the right... Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We've got Northern Pike who says, oh, North, sorry, it's Northern. I see. I assumed it was Northern Pike. It's a different Northern. It's Northern Bear 67. Thank you for everything you do in this amazing program, educating us on the laws. My absolute pleasure. And I'm so glad I get to, uh, uh, to do it. It's, it's one of those things that, uh, uh, you know, I, I would have never anticipated this would be my life. And I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that I get to, uh, to do this and share with everybody. So, uh, and of course I meant to click the next question or statement in line. Uh, we got Tim Shallow says, good morning. Uh, a question about police and using video. So uh, have you seen the video of the cop distracted driving? Not necessary for his work looking at Insta. I don't know about Insta. I don't think that's what they were doing. I, I can't tell from the video. I had a quick look at it. Uh, here's the deal. Police are legally permitted to use their, their, their telephones, their radios, their computers. They're allowed to. They're actually permitted under law. Now, 
if they were doing something on duty for a lawful purpose, it's lawful. If they're ordering pizza, it's a problem. But they're responsible for everything they do. So whether this was right or wrong in the eyes of the person seeing it, because very often, I get it, we can do things that public can't do. And it bothers people because how come that guy's doing it? Isn't it dangerous? Well, what if it was really important information? You know, what, what if, and even if it was Instagram, and I'm not saying it was or wasn't, I'm saying, what if it was? Okay, maybe they're on their way to a to a um, a situation involving something that was posted online, and that is relevant to the investigation that they're going to. I don't know. I'm not that person. I can't articulate, nor do I have to. Last week, when we were involved with the the missing person, you know, we had our information on our phone, the description, last known sighting. So from time to time, we needed to reference that, and that just happens to appear on our phone. So there's absolutely. And when you're operating reasons. a police vehicle, you're exempt too, and right. and that's the thing. So. It, it, it may upset people. It may not have the optics that it's good. And unfortunately or fortunately, it is what it is. It is something that is part of this job. It's required for public safety, officer safety, and integral parts of, of investigations. Like, it's not like we get to sit down, read the, the, the synopsis of what's about to happen. We're going to what's happening because it's happening and we're responsible to respond to it. it it's, it's, it's more complicated than that, but... And, and maybe it's not. Maybe that's just what it is. It, it, it is something that is necessary. And again, we're responsible for whatever we do. So if that turned into a collision, maybe you're responsible for it. All right. Uh, oh, somebody who somebody doesn't like uh, our government. That's unfortunate. Uh, Evan says, money well spent. Well, I'm glad that you say that because very often people come on and say, my tax dollars working for this, putting you online and why? Anyway, I don't know why that accent came in. But uh, but the deal is that very often people get grumpy about the fact that a police officer is online talking about stuff and things. And you know what? I, I get it. You're entitled to feel how you feel. Uh, but I'm glad that you feel positively. And then we've got... Uh, this person who says, Toronto police really don't have much work to do. Uh, this is work. Um, now, my friend Jared here is a volunteer, so thank you for your, for your service and volunteering today. And I am a media relations officer who talks about education and stuff and things. And, and today we're talking about not only uh, traffic, safety, traffic law and police stuff, it's auxiliary stuff and motorcycles. So uh, if you got questions, uh, we generally have answers. And it's been a really different pace for the show today because I have a guest and we're, we're chatting. But we're still here to, to do what we do, and we'll be here again on Friday. Now, tomorrow we won't be here because I have another thing that's come up. No more wheels. It's a totally different thing. But nevertheless, I do have other police work to do and other things that have to happen. So, uh, unfortunately, no show tomorrow, but we'll be back on Friday. Uh, let's see here. Dad joke flagged by a K or a, a dad joke from a Kayla, and we'll come back to that. Uh, do, 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 uh, Catherine, is it Kath? Kathrilla says, Good morning. Uh, somebody who, again, doesn't like our government. It's the same person, but if you keep spamming, I will unfortunately have to mute you, and I don't want to do that. Uh, so if you if you don't have anything to say that's relevant to the conversation, uh, please don't spam the chat. We do have a can of spam if you'd like to see it, but, but don't don't spam the chat. Okay, um, what do we got here? Boom, boom, boom. Ah, how long can someone have an, a, a, an expired license, especially if they have their G already? Well, if it's expired, it doesn't work anymore. It's expired, so you can't drive with it. So that's an instantaneous thing. The second or the moment you've gone past midnight on that last day, you no longer have a license. Now, this I guess the question is how long until it's gonzo's goodbye? Like, when can you just go back in? And I've got an answer for you, um, and it's because somebody asked that before. <laughs> and, and actually, my answer is uh, go visit trafficcop.ca. Because after they asked that question, I went and put a link to it on my link tree, which is at trafficcop.ca. So that is the best way to get the information because it depends on the amount of time. There are different things. Within one to three years, you need to take another eye test, I think. Right. After three years to 10 years, I think at a certain point, you, is it three to, I think within, within three years, you can just do the eye test and pay. I think, and that's why I'm saying go to trafficcop.ca, I think between three years and 10 years, you have to. You can get an accelerated G1, G2, and G test, but you still have to test again. And if it's beyond ten years, you start again with all the waiting periods. Right. So I've never had to. I would. I don't know what I would do without a license. My life would be vastly uh, just. No, no I, I can't. I can't not have a license. I need the license. <laughs> so I, I won't be one of these persons to try and figure it out. I did the, the first time I had a conversation about this. It was a, a gentleman who moved to Ireland from Ontario and told me the whole story about 
how hard it is to get a license there to the point where he never did it. And now he's coming back to Ontario and he's like, ah, I got to do all this stuff again. It sucks. Yeah, starting over, I, you know, I've gone through this process with my, my kids and it's very different, Sean, than when we were going through the license. You did your test, you got your license. 365 and That's 30 it. days later, I was a G-Class license Absolutely. driver. So uh, it's, it's not a process that you want to put yourself through if you don't have to. For sure. So this is one of those things that, oh, and another thing you can do by going to trafficcop.ca is take the link to the Ontario uh, website that allows you to sign up for reminders. Have you done this? No, that's, that's you a can great sign point. up for reminders for your health card, for your driver's license, and for your plate renewals, which may not be a thing anymore. But it's free. They'll text you. They'll SM, yeah, SMS. They'll text you. They'll call you with voicemail, and they'll send you emails. But they don't send you anything in the mail anymore. So you actually have the uh, without doing this, you actually run the risk of expiring. That's a great tip. I like that tip. It's a good tip. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when I say something and then I find someone who's, who typed what I, what I said. <laughs> Tax dollars being spent on TikTok show. Mind you, these officers are on the clock. Um, right. Oh, I got to say that in response to that, this is the most cost-effective way to get information out. You know, uh, very often, and, and we still do these, where we go to barbecues and we have a dozen officers there and we're flipping burgers and it's great and people don't mind because they're eating. But that costs money. All these things cost money. Very often it's publicly funded. It's funded by community events and things like that. Um, but it's still a larger investment than one officer, and in this case, uh, also an auxiliary officer, spending time giving to the community. Man, it's really not costing very much of anything. Okay. How long does a police record check take now? Like for me to check you or for you to get a proper request? Of, have you ever done it? Did you, I, you I have with, with my son who, who required one for employment okay. at a community center. It's actually a very simple process. Now you can do it online it, within a week. Really? Yeah, it's, it's very quick. Uh, there's an opportunity. You can also do a hard copy and drop it off at, at police headquarters on college, or you can do it online. But if you give yourself a few days, it, it's not that complicated Good. and not that time consuming. And you can get that information at tps.ca. Correct. Uh, another person, oh, Oh, he says, crazy how we went from 365 to getting licenses for free and cereal boxes. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Uh, you know what? It, it's, I had my, my M-Class license very shortly after becoming a licensed driver as well. That's not what I was... I, so I, I clicked on Zombie's message, but that's not actually what I was going to click on. I was looking for someone who was upset that we had only like a certain number of people watching live at the time. Um, I, I, oh, the, here it is. I, I, I actually like negative comments. As my, uh, to me, trolls and negs are, are, are really what make interesting conversation. Uh, so Evan says, 50 viewers, by the way, does it really justify having this? Um, you're here, and you're talking specifically about uh, TikTok, which I, I messed up because I, I, played, I put a fixed image up, and they have automatic sensors for that, and the music didn't play. So I oopsie dude, which is why is, we, we've had 40,000 people. 40,000 people is the, is the highest number we've had in a live stream. We used to average 16,000. Now we average about five or 6,000 based on the, um, uh, the algorithms change over the last couple of years. But we also have 82 people watching live on uh, Twitter. And actually we can, we can look at where the breakdown is. Uh, 50 people on, on, uh, on X, uh, on traffic services, 20 people watching on voiceover cop on X, uh, two people on three people together on, on Twitch, uh, eight people on YouTube, one person on Facebook, we, you know, we're, we're everywhere. So while Evan's whining about 50 people on TikTok, there's a whole lot more. And it's the replays. It's I the mean, replays. Absolutely. So we have an entire library. Every live stream we do is archived forever and ever and ever, uh, on YouTube. And it's, also available as a podcast because we download this and then re-upload it to the Spotify. So it goes everywhere. So Evan, I, I totally appreciate, well, if, if, if 50 people were the only people getting the, uh, the benefit of an hour of my time, that's still actually really good. <laughs> it really is. Because I, I could, if I sat and talked to one person for an hour and then spoke to another person for an hour, and I did that 50 times, it's 50 hours of, of, of value. So, you know, for one hour. No getting, better way to scale the message. Yeah, and, and this is... Again, different format today than normal, but uh, usually we're bang, 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 just going through all of the, uh, the discussion. We're still doing, we're just doing it a little bit slower. Okay, uh, let's see here. If you go to, oh, and my wife is giving you advice about the background check because she used to work in that department. If you go to the records page they, and let you know they're processing March 24th submissions now. So that's, that's behind a little bit, but not that far behind. All right. 
what is this? All my traffic issues have been solved with a four-way camera. The camera never lies. Are we? Is this what's in your car? Is that what we're, I don't know the context of your statement. Alanis Kitchen says, oh, it's Alanis Kitchen? Alanis Kitchen. Walking to school every morning is so dangerous, even in the quiet uh, residential area. Anytime that you are being put in a position to be exposed to drivers who might have their face buried in a telephone. I mean, and, and I keep, people, people uh, get upset when I say that pedestrians have to be careful because they want to, they, they, they say, well, big car, they're responsible. I don't care who's responsible. I care about who's going to get hurt if you rely on that person to keep you safe, whoever that person is. If that person is not doing their job, you get hurt. You as a pedestrian get really hurt and they may or may not get charged. And then there's a different side of the conversation where pedestrians often, uh, I shouldn't say often, at times do things that are unsafe and drivers don't even have the ability to respond even if they do see them because the decision. So I, I, I'm of the school of, you know, Elmer the, uh, the elephant of look both ways, do all these things. Like it was drilled into me as a kid. And then there's also courtesy where you actually make, you know, if a car is coming, you, you let them go because, hey, why, why would You're I... You're going to lose. There's logic there. Yeah. However, there's a level of entitlement today where not just pedestrians, but everybody seems that they're more important than everybody else. And, and, and if you are courteous, sadly, you're not rewarded by it. You're, the people just take total advantage of you. So um, we need to find some kind of uh, nice and happy medium where everyone gets treated nicely. It's, we're, we're Canadian. We're supposed to be friendly. I don't know what this, what's gone. This is, it's gone. It's gone off the rails. Uh, let's see here. We got a quote from Akela. We'll get to that in a little while. And what do we got here? I hate when sport bikes ride in between cars in the DVP. I find riders on Harleys are much more law-abiding than sport bike riders. Interesting interesting uh, comment from Northern Pike, by the way. I, actually, I said good morning earlier, I think. Um, I'm a rider. I see both offenders. I see sport bike riders doing it at high speed, and I see Harley riders doing it at lower speeds. Uh, maybe because that's their, you know, they got the big big bars and whatnot. Uh, but it's not safe either way. Riding between um, lanes. Have you have you had the experience? What we're seeing in fifty two division are the electric bikes. Yes. Uh, on the sidewalks. Oh. Now, I, I know all divisions are are facing their own challenges with mm -hmm. with the electric bikes. Bikes, whether they're uh, pedal assist or full electric. Sort of the electric Vespas, I call them. Even if they're full pedal, they uh, can't be on the sidewalks. Absolutely. That's that's a huge concern that we have in, in 52 Division uh, because of the number of, uh, of fast food uh, delivery yes. folks that are that are on the road. So that's the experience that, that we have, again, weaving in and out. So very similar to what Northern Pike is experiencing, but now in a dense urban environment. And, and where do pedestrians go to be safe? Where do people on, on the, you know, their own personal mobility devices because of whatever you know, issues they have with walking have nowhere safe to go because cyclists are, are now infringing on that safe space? It's not all cyclists. It's those that choose to break the law, but it, it's, you know, it's very d disconcerting. The, uh, in terms of, to finish off on the sport bike ride in between, if you are riding between vehicles, although there is no specific charge for lane splitting, it qualifies easily as careless driving, stunt driving, depending on the observations of an officer, and in extreme situations, it could be uh, dangerous driving under the criminal code. So people really have to think about this. As we get into the weather and we start seeing it more and more, and then we've got these, these jokers on uh, sport bikes who, who hide their plates. You know, they tuck them out or they don't even run with plates. They're uninsured vehicles driven by li unlicensed drivers very often. Uh, they're menaces, and, and I look forward to seeing all of them charged and prosecuted. But anyway, that's just me and my dreams. Uh, I've already said good morning to my wife, but that's my wife. And apparently, Akela's wife and, uh, and son are in the chat too. Welcome, welcome. All right. There are, people are stealing cars at an alarming rate. Have you heard a lot in 52 Division in particular? Uh, not so much in 52, but I'm doing a lot of work in 53. My partner, uh, PC Herzberg, and I are actually going out on an auto theft detail quite often during the week. And what we'll do is we'll visit homes in 53 Division that have high target vehicles. And uh, we'll uh, knock on the door and encourage the owner of those vehicles to take certain steps to at least make the th car theft less likely. So what kind of things do you generally you know, suggest? First of all, if you have a garage, use, use it. it. I mean, that's, that's the first and best thing that you can do. And I understand in the city, a lot of houses don't have garages that's or they're problem. filled with other, other things. That's but my if, storage room. But if you do have one, use it. Mm -hmm. Number two, we're seeing a lot of the old school locking techniques 
come back into fashion. Uh, steering wheel locks is a big one. Of course, the club comes to mind. Yeah. That will slow a theft down or prevent it altogether. We're seeing pedal locks, a lock on the pedal. Some folks are putting the old boots on the tires. I've yes. seen that quite a bit. Again, these are pain in the neck things sometimes. Yeah. 10 minutes to put on you, means 10 minutes to take off. Sure, but a, but a steering wheel lock is 30 seconds. Yes. Right? So there are preventative things like that that are fairly simple and cost effective. On the extreme side of things, we're seeing a lot more of those bollards. Yes, in certain communities where you're actually either manually locking down yes. a post at the end of your driveway or some of them pneumatic coming out of the ground, some very expensive options. Um, but there are options. And, and, and you know, based on what your abilities are to, to pay for such things, those could work for you. And lighting. Lighting, 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 lighting. We're visiting a lot of houses and it's into the evening and there's no light. Mm. A big reactive uh, motion sensor light shining on that car will have those perps thinking maybe this isn't the place I want to be. Possibly. And here's the big thing about theft prevention, and it, it's a deterrent. Yes. Uh, often we say that locks keep honest people out because criminals don't care about locks. They have other ways of dealing with it. These things could make your vehicle less attractive than your neighbor's vehicle. And sad to say that your neighbors are responsible for their stuff, you're responsible for your stuff. So better, better somebody else's than yours is usually the way to go. So do things to protect your stuff. And that makes that means you do whatever you can. And that also means you still do the Faraday pouch or bag or box in, inside your home so they can't use relay theft because that's an easy way to get and go Huge. quickly. We're seeing that all over the place. And and those Faraday boxes should be in the kitchen. You know, don't don't keep them at the front door, well, perhaps. Well, There's it, just mixed. It depends. There's a lot of mixed. And and uh, it's certainly, you know, once upon a time, we said hide the keys. Correct. And now, because in, in, in my buddy Marco, who, who gave very good advice at a, at a meeting, was taken out of context in that there has been a, an increase of people who are willing to kick down your door, armed with firearms, and take the keys. So I believe in harm reduction over theft reduction. You don't want to get hurt. Better to have your keys taken, your car stolen, but still do all the other stuff. Right. And, and he wasn't saying not to do the other stuff, too. So still do all of those things. Uh, but I, I do agree that I don't want them at the front door, not because I, I don't want them to find the keys and leave happily. I want them to not uh, have a Faraday bag that doesn't work as well as advertised. That's the reason I want right. it a little bit, a little further. But the Faraday bag I use for Mission Darkness, I can be standing in front of the car. And well, it's they're completely terrific. They're, they're amazing. terrific. They're inexpensive. In fact, a lot of the insurance companies will give them to you for yes. free now. York Regional Police, shout out to my friends in York. If you live in York Region, go to a York Regional Police detachment or, or, or division, what's it called? It's called a district. Isn't district. It? district. They give them away at the police station. Yeah. They give them away at the police station. So props to York. They have more money than us. Good stuff. Uh, but, but so, and then to finish off, immobilizers. Have you had a lot of people with immobilizers? We're start, so the, 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 the factory installed mobilizers are terrific. You've got to be careful. Mobilizers are a great idea, but consider once you start mucking around with the electronics and the electrical yeah. harness in the vehicle, it may actually void your warranty. I've heard that. Right? So you, if you're going to put one of those uh, disabilizers in, Immobilizers. Sorry, Im excuse me, immobilizers. Make sure you do the homework so it does yes. not void your warranty. Yes, uh, professionally installed. And, yes. uh, and it, but there's some really good options that, that are apparently from the people I've spoken to good. And some people are doing simple things like taking the, the, uh, the fuel pump relay out. Right. You know, pop the hood, pull it out. It's a pain in the butt, but it's far less work than other things. And, you know, but it, the truth is if they really want it, they'll tow it. Like they'll do whatever it takes to get it. But you just, you want to make it harder. Yes. Question for you, sir. Is 22 young to be accepted to the auxiliary? Absolutely not. We have a number of folks that uh, are in their uh, low to mid 20s. It's a, uh, when we, I do, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to actually do some of the interviews oh, nice. uh, to, uh, uh, for the auxiliary program. And we've seen very mature 22 year olds with extensive experience that would be a great asset to the force. Now, Experience comes with age, and as you get older, you experience more things, and those experiences help. absolutely help. But my advice is don't be shy. If you're interested, apply. What I say is don't count yourself out. Exactly. Don't take yourself out. Let somebody tell you you're not ready, but don't assume you're not ready because you could be turning down an opportunity of a lifetime. And then what happens is you were really eager today. You could have taken advantage. You might have been hired, but you get down and then you get negative and then you don't come back. You don't try and you give up. And, and that's the and, end. And what we've seen as well is folks that have applied and not necessarily gotten in the first time, but they learned so much from that initial process 
that when they come back the second or third time, well, they're, they're golden. I applied to the auxiliary. I got in. I applied to courts. I got in. I had two now behavioral events interviews under my belt, which I then used in the behavioral events for promotion. And I had that experience and comfort in an interview environment where I then got promoted to auxiliary sergeant. I then had three uh, things. I got promoted to be a, a supervisor in courts. Four uh, interviews under my belt, I became a police officer. Yes, I was successful in all of those, but each one built on top of the, yes. the, 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 the previous to make me a better candidate and speak more, more freely and more comfortably. So don't count yourself out. That is a big thing. Uh, are car meets illegal in Toronto? This is something that is being a discussion in a huge way when it comes to York Regional Police because they in York Region because they've advertised that they are going to charge people and it's, it's huge tickets. But is it illegal here? So they have bylaws that give them additional abilities to to respond to these meets. But in Toronto, if you're not breaking any laws, simply getting together in a parking lot to have coffee with your friends is not illegal. You're all patrons of the Timmies. You can be in the Timmies. Trespassing can become an issue if you're somewhere you're not supposed to be. And certainly stunt driving and stupidity. I, I, there is no specific charge for stupidity. I wish there was. But <laughs> but but acting in such a way that you are putting lives at risk, damaging property, and, and stunt driving and, and, and burnouts, all, it's damaging property. What about the noise components? So noise components on the highway okay. is actually an offense of unnecessary noise. noise comp- uh, the noise charge on private property becomes a different charge than the Highway Traffic Act. Still an issue. But I would probably be going by way of uh, criminal dangerous driving, stunt driving, and uh, um, not the unnecessary noise. I'd be putting other charges, which are much more serious at, at play. Not to mention the fact that if your vehicle is unsafe, it had to get somewhere. It had to get to where it was going. So if we got you on the road, uh, breaking any laws, I expect that you've drawn a lot of attention to yourself and to be charged. I remember, do you ever, ever, ever heard of something called Dark Nights? Sure. So Dark Nights back in the day was a car meet. I don't know if they still have such a thing. But um, I remember York Regional Police setting up outside with their race program and just hammering every car that came out. They were all illegal. Everyone got tickets to the point where they stopped leaving and called tow trucks. And they all came in and flatbedded their cars out uh, <laughs> to avoid having to, uh, to, to pay for that. Uh, well, it was cheaper to tow, I guess. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, a question from Josh Page. Is it okay to have my nine-year-old daughter sit in the front seat of a van that has only two seats? Have you ever d- discussed this stuff before? I, I have not. We were we were very conservative with our kids with respect to a properly installed infant seat, and when they graduated to a booster, a properly installed booster seat. So this is out of my realm. So in terms, I, 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 I'm a I'm a qualified uh, child uh, passenger safety technician, and I have very strong uh, feelings about this, both as an enforcement officer and as a as a dad, uh, and and as a technician. But nine years old is legal to be anywhere in the car. In fact, anywhere in the car other than the driver's seat is legal at any age, as long as you're wearing the appropriate or using the appropriate child safety restraint, whether it be a uh, rear-facing, a front-facing, a booster, based on their size and age and whatnot and needs. As long as you're using those, they can be anywhere. It's not suggested to be in the front seat, but if you only have one seat, one seat's it. So uh, it's not illegal. And at nine years old, they're already older than the minimum requirement for sitting in a seat without a booster. Eight years old, 80 pounds, four foot nine, any one of those three give you the ability to legally be without a booster, although not necessarily the safest option. If your child's really petite, they may be, it may be beneficial to uh, have them in the backseat longer. And backseat is best till 14 and as far away from, as possible from an airbag because those airbags deploy at 200 miles an hour could be fatal just from the airbag. Right. Things to think about. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there was something I flagged. I think, I think, I think I thought it, we're getting frightfully close to 11 o'clock and I have to speak to the Toronto star in a moment. Uh, cause that's one of the things I do. I'm a media relations officer. I'm not just a TikTok guy. Uh, Gavin loves the OPP and you're allowed to, even if they're not as good as us, just saying, <laughs> uh, police foundation, uh, student says, good morning. Uh, comments about the Leafs. We got some dad jokes to go back to. Okay. Scrolling quickly to see what I've missed. Uh, we talked about that. I'm trying to wrap it up. PK says, hi, officer. Hi, back. Uh, drinking coffee while driving, question mark, depends on the province. Have you? Did you know that in, the, in, in uh, Al- it's Alberta, British Columbia? One of them, it's illegal to drink anything. You just can't, you can't drink and drive alcohol, obviously, but you can't drink, you can't be distracted. They, would, they consider it distracted driving. Different here. Uh, let's see here. Amanda got her M, got their M2 uh, first and started driving a car. How do I renew an expired plate? The Ontario website has not been working for some time now. 
Go in person. Go to, go to Service Ontario. They'll, they'll sort you out. Online is great. But sort it out uh, in person. Uh, Miss Pep said, or Mrs. Pep says, love listening to this. Wish it was all day. I I've gone what felt like all. Day. I had like a two and a half hour live stream last uh, last week. It was it was a long. That's the longest I've ever gone. Uh, replay of that incredibly long episode. You you can replay this. You can replay. We have, I we've done. This is like forty episode forty six already. That's forty six hours of play. It's amazing. Uh, that's this year. There's hundreds of episodes in the archive. Go to YouTube. You can watch this all day long. You can set up a playlist. You could, um, if if you're really like down for it, you know, uh, try and figure out what the most popular questions are. I would love for someone. I got to get AI to do this, but I'd love to know what the number one, the top ten questions like of of the last two years or three years. Can you believe it's been a couple like, years I'm doing this? Uh, terrific. It's shocking. Shocking. And, and being here in the studio, Sean, I, I, it just brings a level of appreciation to the complexity to, to bring this to the audience. So, well, you've worked in radio. Yeah. How is this compared to a radio gig? This is, a, this is extremely professional, uh, ex- extremely well done. Um, it, it's, it's a top-notch, it's certainly a top-notch operation. I appreciate but, that. But you deserve that. You're a top-notch facilitator. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny when uh, we went through a lot of growing pains and this is by, by, this is absolutely the most refined it's been so far. Uh, I used to go out of one box into another, into two phones, a camera with two, like I was doing a lot of juggling and I had, I had help. It was, it was interesting. I'm now, there, there's nobody helping. It's just me. So I, but I always appreciated when people would say, um, you got to get tech support to help you. I'm like, but I am tech support. Like everything I've done is me. It's like there's, there's nobody else. There's, the, the help I was getting was like somebody saying, uh, you know, mute that guy because he's being, you know, we had moderators, uh, some from the community. By the way, shout out to all those people who have been with us from the very beginning, the official and unofficial moderators of the time. Um, it's been a pretty amazing. And and auxiliary officers. We had an auxiliary officer and a parking officer that were helping out. Um, now it's really just me. But, uh, you know, maybe there's an opening. Maybe maybe this could be a, you know, get, get, get you volunteering with the program here on a regular. Happy to help. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got uh, Zombie who says, I teach kids all the time. I teach all... I teach my kids all the time. Reading is a problem sometimes. Uh, that you have to pay attention because not everyone else is. And I think that's a fabulous lesson. Really, really do. Uh, let's see here. Crossing the street, facing... Oh, okay. Absolutely fantastic point from Amanda. Uh, yeah. Distracted walking is a thing. It's it, If you're not paying attention to whatever you're doing... I mean, could you imagine if you were... You know, I, I'm thinking about, like, cutting food. If you do that without paying attention, you lose a finger. It's very, very instant uh, you know, response to your, your uh, oopsie-do. Crossing the street could have really, really, really negative effects. It's, it's almost become the, uh, the norm rather than the exception. Yes. Yes. I, in fact, I've wanted to stop people to congratulate them for actually stopping. Right. Like, whether they're walking, riding, driving, I'm so shocked. And they do this in the States. Positive ticketing. Pulling people over. Here's an ice cream sandwich. Thanks so much for being awesome. You actually followed the rule. And, uh, I'll tell a quick story, but I want to acknowledge Linda, who says, good morning, heroes. We love you all. Linda, big supporter of, uh, of, of law enforcement and first responders. So thank you, Linda. Always appreciate the appreciation. Uh, it's not required, but it does feel nice. Uh, let's see here. The, um, the What I was going to say is I, I remember supervising someone uh, once upon a time, and they, they did something right. And I wanted to give them an awards recommendation for doing it right. And the comment from one of the supervisors that I report to us, but they're just doing their job. I'm like, but nobody else is. Right. So it's bad when the 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 average is underwhelming, and the 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 minimum <clears throat> of doing your job is now extraordinary. Um, that's a perspective shift that that I think really says a lot about where we're at in society. But that's just an aside. Did I lose my book place where I wanted to put a comment up on screen? Aha. Uh-huh. I don't know what what people you see in hell is talking about. Uh, something about dreams. Uh, let's see here. Shouldn't you two be at work? Oh no, that that joking. That's funny. Uh, are catback exhausts are illegal? How illegal are catback exhausts? I had to read that twice or three times. They're not illegal if they're not illegal. They are illegal if they are illegal. And I hate to give an answer like that, but there are catback exhausts that meet the requirements of the Highway Traffic Act. There are others that don't. Depends. Find out what your what your buying before you buy in and waste your money, uh, as well as yellow daytime running lights. So you're legally permitted to project yellow light forward, yellow or white. Those are the two colors. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I, I might be tall. I'm six foot five. So uh, I, I am taller than the average uh, uh, the average person. Uh, I I don't know if I, I, I it makes buying cars difficult. I have to buy full size <laughs> ones to fit into. Yeah, I'm a big guy. I keep warning everybody, and people are like, I meet people in person. I have a ten minute conversation with them. They walk away. They come back. Wait, you're that guy. Like I follow you. Like I see you all. The, That's great. But they don't realize because somehow somehow I'm not that big on their screen. I'm not the right guy. It's funny. All right, uh, I got to wrap this up. I got to wrap it up. Can fifty year, can a fifty plus year old change careers and become an officer, or is there an age cap? Sixty five was the age cap that was advertised when I got on. I had a fifty two year old in my class for police constable. Um, what would you talk about? Uh, the, this? La- the last con- the last class that just graduated actually had a fifty one year old as well. As an auxiliary or PC? No, as a, as a full fledged PC. As a PC, absolutely. Right on. So if if you make the commitment and and you're physically fit and you can pass the tests, absolutely go for it. Age is just a number these days. Truly, you it know. Is. Things are just different. It really, it, it, there's no reason you can't start a career at 50. And, and if you've always wanted to, then why wouldn't you? Like being, being where you're not happy is not okay. It, and you don't need to. Uh, Connor says, six, five. <laughs> and and uh, uh, they, feel, they feel so short. <laughs> That's very funny. That's how I feel. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's different standing like this. I can, I, I can't, my knees hurt. Uh, let's see, I was going to, I was going to try and, yeah, I hurt my, my leg. Uh, do auxiliary staff wear body cameras? I'm we, so glad we're getting some auxiliary questions. We don't yet. You think it's going to come? I hope so. I, it, it's, I, a, it's a great tool to protect both the officer as well as the public at large. I'm, I'm from the perspective of protecting the officer, I think is paramount. I mean, absolutely. You know, there, there's, there's times when footage could help either side, but I'm, I'm most interested in, 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 uh, uh, stressed out about the allegations against police when they're unfounded and it ruins people's lives and causes stress. But having that camera means you 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 have a, th- a witness, an impartial witness of what happened. I think it's brilliant. But there's a huge expense to it. So I, I, I hope that may- maybe there's an auxiliary fundraiser for uh, for, for cameras. Uh, let's see. How long do I have to... What is this? <clears throat> How long do I have to use out-of-province plates? I'm visiting from BC for three months. Guess what? Uh, you're visiting, so it's different. But if you moved here and took up residency, you would have, I believe, 30 days. But you're visiting, truly visiting, not becoming a resident, uh, then you don't have an obligation to switch them because you don't live here. You're just visiting. So uh, part of it is language. You know, if I if you're pulled over after 30 days and they go, where do you live? And you say, I live here uh, in, in Toronto, you're violating. If you say you're living back home and can prove it, you're not violating. It's all about telling the truth, really. Uh, let's see here. And then, yeah, okay. Uh, Fly Guy Canada says, thanks, guys. I expect to see a, a message from you when you apply for the police service or the auxiliary. Uh, that's the, the, the chap who was saying he wants that. He wants to know 50's too old. Uh, let's see here. Are valved exhausts legal? No, they're not. You're bypassing the exhaust system, and even having that equipment installed makes them illegal. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, we've got a question of, sorry, I joined late. What does auxiliary mean or what's auxiliary mean? So we are, uh, a mem- we are members of the Toronto Police Service in a volunteer capacity. Uh, like I said at the, at the top of the hour, I liken it to the reserves. It, you know, we're, we're yeah. a volunteer force. We do a number of proactive things as well as reactive things. Proactively, we're involved in community events, crime prevention details, we talked a little bit about the Santa Claus parade and yeah. our involvement in those major in those major events. But we also assist regular officers in some day to day duties. For example, I, I bring up the the missing elderly from last week. We were mobilized to help search for a vulnerable missing elderly in the city. So there's opportunities to contribute to sort of regular policing as well. So it's a combination of a bunch of things. But at the end of the day, we're a volunteer service. Mm-hmm. It's really here to serve the community. And it's a, it's a great way to play because I, I had fun. I, I had regular connections where I'd meet up, go patrol, have fun. You know, it, it's not being a cop, it, but it, it's, it's, it's getting to see a different side of the city, a different side of your community and truly contribute. So uh, a huge endorsement for me. I, I did it for 12 years. If you're looking for a unique way to volunteer and volunteerism is important. Make, it makes you a better human. Uh, we've got a, a, a couple of jokes and uh, I got to have my finger on the, uh, on the on the response buttons because y- you never know how this is going to go. Uh, so Northern Pike says the Energizer Bunny was recently arrested. He was charged. I pressed the wrong button in order. He was charged with battery. 
So yeah, I hit the button too fast. It was, I ruined it. Uh, that, that, I like that one. I actually like that one. Okay. This is from Michaela Jaconis. If you ever get cold, just stand in the corner or stand in a corner for a bit. It's usually about 90 degrees. It's actually good. Not bad. I don't mind that one. I, I like that. <laughs> now, he has a quote. I said dad jokes, but he says, this is a, an Akela quote, an enemy will almost never be anything except an enemy. All one can do with an enemy is defeat him. But an ad adversary can sometimes become an ally. That's from the uh, Grand Admiral Mithra Narundo Thrawn. Oh, this is, a, is this a movie quote? Thrawn? Is that a, is that a, I don't know. But I like it. I'm going to watch this again and read it. Okay. Uh, we talked about car meets. It's not a joke. That's not a joke. Uh, a question before the last ad joke from Ryan Pinn. That it's from uh, Sebi. Wants to know, what, uh, what are brake light laws? Many missing lights. You have to have one, minimum one. Whereas headlights, you can only, if you don't have two, you get a ticket for uh, improper headlights. If you have a functioning brake light, you won't get a ticket. But think about this. When you go from three to two to one, eventually you'll have none, and then you would be eligible not only for having a vehicle that's unsafe and, and not drivable at night, uh, but you, you must have one functioning uh, lamp to the rear. All right, last ad joke, and then, and then, we're, then we're out. Why don't they use holy water in vaccines? Because you can't take the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> I, I got worried. <laughs> I, I saw the hesitation I got worried. there. <laughs> I, I, anyway, uh, it has been a slice. I would love to stay longer, but I, I'm, I'm expecting to get a phone call in five minutes uh, from the Toronto Star, and I need to answer some questions that they have about stuff and things. So uh, it's my pleasure, as always, and my, and thank you so much for joining me because it thank really you. was a pleasure having you here. I hope, we'll, I, I hope you'll come and do this again. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be back here on Friday, 10 a.m. for Friday before the weekend uh, is upon us. And I'm looking forward to that too because Friday shows are almost always exciting. Stay safe. You too. Drive sober, stay safe. Drive legally, park legally. Um, listen to good music. What, what would, what's, what's your biggest motivational takeaway, giveaway, gift of, of inspiration? Just dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> I like it. All right, everybody, take care. We'll, we'll share the traffic song, the original one, not the AI. Uh, enjoy, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Helps the traffic flow. Watch for pedestrians, look out for bikes, and don't drive like a jerk that no one likes. Yellow light, red light, green light. Go. Driving safely is the way to go. Put down your cell phone, nobody needs you to text and drive on the DVP. Yellow light, red light, green light. Go. Stop the stop signs, look both ways, then go. Seatbelt, save your life and beat and watch your driving. Don't speed. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely is the way to go. Don't drink and drive or smoke some weed because you might go to jail and not get free. Yellow light, red light, green light, go. Driving safely helps the traffic.